Well, I couldn't be more excited than to be joined right now during the GFA with the co-creators of the Virtual Guitar Orchestra, Mark Gergich and Urush Baric, along with the composer of Kaleido Kathara, one of the most prolific and recognized living composers for the guitar and part of the celebrated Assad duo, Sergio Assad. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today for this exploration of virtual guitar orchestras. I'll start off by saying, clearly you nailed the name down before this got out and had the idea of a virtual guitar orchestra. So if you wouldn't mind, Mock, would you tell us a bit about the idea behind the project? You know, what was the inspiration? What motivated you to start this? Uh, sure thing, Chuck. Uh, thanks for having us here. Um, really nice to be with you all. Um, it's actually a funny coincidence, um, for better or for worse. I was contemplating on ways of how to, um, you know, create different audience development tools for the classical guitar. And this kind of a global guitar initiative way of virtually connecting, uh, you know, lovers of the instrument, um, you know, came about uh, rather early, actually, uh, in the fall of 2019. And, um, you know, I have uh, collaborated with Sergio uh, for um, a while now on many different projects and, um, you know, have had immense respect for him. So I called him immediately, even back then, I think that was maybe it's either September or, or October, and discussed this possibility of, uh, of doing a commission, of doing something that, um, you know, virtually connects us all and uh, gives an opportunity for uh, just simply guitar amateurs, lovers, aficionados to, uh, to pair up with their, uh, uh, with the guitarist heroes of the day and, you know, uh, assume the virtual stage. This was partially also inspired by um, by me being a fan of uh, the virtual um, choir that was a video made by Eric Whitaker and his team uh, a while back. And I just thought this would be a cool way to put classical guitar on the map. And coincidentally, you know, this was an idea that was um, initiated back then. And I've, I also discussed this thing with Urosh and, you know, tried to figure out how and if it's uh, possible at all to pull it off. And uh, all three of us were kind of like in this semi-contact even back then. And then, <clears throat> and then I was in Noonan, Georgia, playing perhaps the last recital, um, uh, the last chamber music concert uh, as the pandemic was hitting. We, we did it in front of a uh, empty hall. Um, and uh, Sergio called me, that was mid-March. And uh, uh, you know, uh, we concluded that perhaps this would be the time to really truly initiate this because um, you know the world will need this. It will need a community uh, and a place to be heard and to socialize and to you know jam together. Uh, so virtual guitar orchestra turnaround time uh, at that very moment was very quick. So Udo, Sergio, and I went to work and you know uh, pretty. Uh, quickly thereafter, there was the Kaleido Kisara, uh, you know, the first performance that I think reached many, many people in uh, several beautiful um, circumstances and ways. So I remember the first time this came on radar for me, um, I instantly was interested at all of the superstars that were going to be performing in this giant guitar orchestra. Uh, I couldn't have been more excited when I heard it for the first time. And the first comment I, I, I recall making to you guys on YouTube was, please, when the pandemic is over, you know, don't stop doing this. This is so amazing. And, and young musicians need to see this. So if I'm not wrong, this, this project was conceived prior to all of us being isolated and, and practicing social distancing. So, uh, Sergio, could you tell us about the, the creative process and, and maybe how it was impacted uh, by everything becoming uh, so isolated? Well, if you ask the same question to Urus, he's going to come up with a different story. If you ask me, it's going to be different, slightly different from, from what Mark told, which is actually he told the truth. So actually, when we first spoke about it, 
uh, I was in Zagreb, invited by him to a festival over there. And uh, he just mentioned briefly about the idea he had of putting a large group together, perhaps. But the thoughts were not about having, you know, brilliant and known established guitar players. It was actually to get the, the community involved, like to invite the students to join. And that was the, the first idea, as, a, as far as I can remember. <laughs> and then when, uh, by coincidence, actually, it took a long time before uh, uh, we spoke again about it, but uh, maybe a week before actually the pandemic really hit, I got an email from Mark and he was telling me about uh, Urush. And Urush actually was clear enough about his ideas, what maybe we could do together. And from that point on, I thought that was a brilliant idea. And when the pandemic hit, uh, we were confined, we had to stay home. So I bet if we were living a normal life, this wouldn't take off the way it did because you know we just sort of stuck home and we had time at our disposal to start initiating things. So I had time to drop everything else that I was doing and dedicate myself to write the piece. And uh, from the beginning, I had in mind that I couldn't write anything that was complicated because you had to put this in hands of people that don't have the experience and so on and so forth. So um, I wrote the piece in two parts uh, where I developed a, for, a first part where you get more experienced players. And for the orchestra, we would have the students, I wrote a very easy part for all of them. And uh, but that's it. But now I know that we can go further because you know the result was excellent and more than I could expect. Urash, what technical challenges did you have to overcome when you were, were putting this all together? What, what was the, the greatest challenge? I know folks watching these virtual orchestras, uh, people want to jump in and, and, and think it maybe is not going to be too challenging to assemble it. Um, can, you, can you speak a little bit about the, the, the technical aspect and maybe even about the creative labeling of colors rather than the part numbers? Absolutely. Uh, so let me first uh, start by saying that we also, Sergio, me and uh, Mac, we were all learning as we went because this is a new kind of a project, I think. So even for me, as I'm quite experienced um, in the field of uh, audio and video ed editing, it was a huge uh, undertaking. So. Um, for me, the biggest challenge was not what you think. It, it wasn't the actual editing. Um, so uh, retiming um, single performances or um, cutting out un unwanted noises and things like this. No, it was actually trying to synchronize every single video clip out of 300 plus. So there were more than 300 clips um, altogether and um, none of the available software uh, on online was not able to synchronize all the pieces together well. So I needed to align every single one of them by hand in my audio editing software. Wow. So, so this was the first huge barrier. But as soon as this was done, there was all, a lot of work with actual database editing, talking to artists, talking to orchestra members, uh, writing them emails if I wanted something changed and things like, like this, creating some behind the scenes and the guidelines for the orchestra members. Uh, and then uh, another huge uh, challenge was also building the motion templates uh, for the actual video. So once you've synchronized all the clips together, edited the sound, you need to export that and also transcode everything into uh, the same frame rate. So people were sending me videos from, I don't know, 24 <laughs> frames per second to 60 frames per second, everything in between. So <laughs> you need to export each one of them uh, each each performance and then uh, in the in the same uh, frame rate, which was twenty four frames per second. And once you have this, you have to import everything into the uh, video editing software, 
and then the actual work starts and building uh, motion templates. Of course, there are a few plugins ex uh, in existence that uh, help you, but uh, never in this kind of scale, never for 150 people. <laughs> <laughs> How about the uh, the use of, of colors for the, the various sections? Uh, would we have pink, violet, magenta, brown, gold, and gray, I believe? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. This was such a great idea, and it was it came from Sergio. So I think he's the the, the one to talk about it. <laughs> well, the thing is, we uh, as we're discussing first the the, uh, the first reunion we had, we talked about the title. The title came from Mark, actually. He suggests kaleidoscope. Then we uh, discussed. My wife and I said so maybe we change the kaleidoscope into kaleido guitar which uh, came out to be a, a good idea. But the colors, I thought that, you know, there were six voices there. Uh, as we decided to invite actually known people to record, we thought that if he had left first, second, third guitar, they wouldn't take it. I was very careful in redistributing the, the voicing and putting important things for everyone to do it, but we didn't want to name it, you know, first, second, third guitar, so we just, decided for colors. Mm -hmm. It was a natural. That, that, yeah. that, that really struck me when I noticed that. I'm, I'm all too familiar with the, you know, the labeling of, of numbers. And, and uh, I just thought that was a beautiful idea. And, and I hope that's something that, that sticks. Uh, Mark, maybe you could tell us a bit about um, the impact that, that you felt this had on, on all of the musicians that were involved, you know, what, what this project meant to them, particularly at this time. Uh, and maybe you could tell us a bit about the, the fundraising you've done with this for Doctors Without Borders. Sure thing. So, um, well, for one, I think this project brought together the community in a very special way. You know, as the pandemic hit, uh, we've seen, you know, people write on social media how either afraid they are or uh, alone they are, or, you know, we, we're still, of course, unsure as to how the future will develop. So this, I think, uh, we can all agree, gave some purpose, you know, some musical trajectory to work towards and, uh, you know, that's beautiful. It's uh, giving a sense of community a totally different spin. And I think that's why perhaps this first project sort of stuck. Uh, Sergio Urush and I spent a great deal of time talking about how to make this impactful uh, in a way that it doesn't necessarily, uh, you know, how shall I say, um, that we show that we care for uh, the larger community as well, that it's not all about us. You know, we spend some, t uh, some time talking about how we always uh, fight for audiences to, uh, you know, to pay attention to us, but um, we rarely offer the same attention back to the, just the general populace. So this thing with Doctors Without Borders was a way of us saying, okay, so here's a broad, uh, guitar community that yes cares about music yes cares about you know uh, jamming together but we also care about all the people around who are uh, uh, you know who are in the same uh, boat and Doctors Without Borders was a little bit like a no-brainer I mean it's uh, you know uh, doctors are on the forefront of uh, fighting this uh, pandemic and trying to make this all better and, you know, the, uh, the virus go away or at least finding a way to fix it. Um, so this was something like, okay, uh, it makes, it makes total sense, you know? Um, and we're happy that we show that as a community, we could contribute even a little bit. I mean, it's, um, uh, we raised some money. It wasn't a lot of money, but I think the initiative was important and uh, we should care, you know, uh, we music, music is a balm for the soul. So we, we do it because it makes us feel good, but it also has to make other people feel good. And this kind of an initiative, I think, show just that, you know, we, we can care about 
a, a broader range of, of people out there that you know show appreciation for what we do in return. Speaking of feeling good and, and, and doing things for the community, you've got to feel good that I understand the Library of Congress has reached out and, and contacted you about archiving the project. Yeah, that was that was a big surprise. Um, it uh, supposedly there's uh, well, I I do know that they archive things. You know, historically they they you know uh, important either books or uh, it being the largest library in the world. I understand. Uh, you know, but also CDs, important musical events, um, really anything. Um, and uh, they reached out to see if they could archive this as being, you know, an, an important thing. Um, so that was exciting because, of course, we, we've all of us three, um, we did this out of love, you know, and uh, it, a lot of hours was put into it. Uh, of course, <laughs> um, the the top the topmost number of hours goes to Urosh. I think he totally uh, won that race with however many hundreds and hundreds of hours editing the the project. But but still, you know, it was an undertaking um, done out of passion, um, and it, it's just simply good to have that recognized. How about for each of you? your favorite aspect of this whole project? Maybe something that, that stood out, something that even surprised you about this project. Sergio, we'll start with you. Well, I can't uh, say that I'm pleased to, to, to find that my friends are real friends. So I know most of the, the, the guitars involved, but one thing is to know them. The other thing is to ask them to do something um, just, just for the pleasure or for the for the good of the, the community. And uh, that was my, wasn't a surprise, but my, the, the, the best thing I got out of it, you know, that the, most of people we approached, they'd say the ass and the, even people that I thought they would refuse. But you know, they all went in and I'm, I'm really, really happy with, with the result. Urosh, and for you? For me, uh, everything was kind of a surprise because it's a project unlike anything I've ever done before. And um, for me, uh, meeting Sergio and working with him was a big pleasure. I have immense respect for his work. And uh, Mac and I have been friends for a long time. But if I had to choose one thing that was the most surprising, it was the um, beautiful emotional stories shared by uh, shared with us by the orchestra members. So, uh, and that proves actually how uh, how well uh, the community uh, was brought together. Uh, we've received some incredibly, uh, even sad, but mostly really. Um, uh, joyful stories uh, from people, how much it means uh, to them that we started this project and how much it means to them to be able to play with, you know, the superstars of classical guitar. So this was the most, uh, I don't know, surprising thing uh, to me personally. And for yourself, Mark? Um, well, they've, they've said it best. Uh, I really cannot, uh, you know, um, uh, I, I cannot say anything more. It's uh, the, the beautiful stories, the friendships, the awareness of the community, all of that matters. And then on top, uh, on top of that, having a, an actual beautiful product, which is an in incredible piece put together in incredibly killed an artful way this is you know something that to be very proud of uh you know it's um how shall i say you know there's been many initiatives to put stuff together uh virtually you know uh in the past um but they have been scaled down for the sake of ease you know uh but this was a true artistic i mean full-on i know sergio said he was thinking of it being a little bit of an easy, easier piece, but <laughs> I do remember reading it, and you know, it's not that easy. <laughs> it wasn't that easy. <laughs> uh, so, 
so in the end, I'm incre- you know, I'm I'm really proud that there's something that is that is uh, just uh, just so good. You know, it's it's just simply an artistically great project that uh, we could be proud having live or virtual, you know, uh, versions of. Well, I I simply can't get enough of it. So you have to tell us this can't possibly be the end of the virtual guitar orchestra. Tell us this was just the beginning of something big. Uh, right. I, um, you know, we've all been kind of talking about how to make most sense of this. And um, Sergio, you know, gave his opinion on something that I completely agree with, which is, um, you know, this is a way perhaps to show that guitar is also well adaptable in artful ways, you know, um, beyond diverse styles. You know, first the first project uh, was, you know, a classically inspired project. It was, uh, you know, classical guitarists were featured. But <clears throat> there's ways of, uh, you know, putting use to technology, artful expression, that could truly, truly uh, reach broader audiences and really become a global guitar initiative, not necessarily a global classical guitar initiative or or this kind of guitar initiative. Truly, I mean, show that uh, we can make beautiful, art, uh, artful things together uh, on this platform, you know? And given the skill set that Urdosh has, uh, you know, putting um, even, very complex things together, it, it gives someone who's a composer perhaps uh, a lot of flexibility, you know? You can, uh, you can uh, have people improvise if it's a finger style guitar project, if it's a, perhaps a flamenco inspired project, you know, you can um, put all these four tastes together and, and still have some kind of a, a classical uh, guitar backbone to it. And this is where we're thinking of moving the project is sort of showcasing different styles and combining those with classical guitar backgrounds. Um, and I think that uh, that could be quite beautiful and significant in our field. Gentlemen, on, on behalf of our entire guitar community, I, I can't thank you enough for, for giving us this, this great gift uh, and it sounds like it's the gift that's going to keep on giving. So, Sergio, Urosh, Mach, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. And now, let's listen to Kaleido Kathara by Sergio Assad.